Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Memory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and welcome back to another edition of Inside the Lab Hunt's Playbook, where today it's suggestion time. We're going to reach out to the fans via Twitter to find out their suggestions of what they want me to cover inside the lab. And our first Twitter question comes from Sadaris Washington at Sadaris. He asked the question, is the 425 adaptable enough for broad personnel, defensive philosophy, a variety of offensive schemes and level of competition? It's a great question. How about we go inside the lab and break down the 425? The 425 basically is your nickel defense, which means you're bringing in an extra defensive back, which is the nickel back. We have four down linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Now, if you're a 4-3 base team, you're replacing a linebacker with that defensive back. If you're a 5-2 base team, you're replacing a defensive lineman with the defensive back. And if you are a 3-4 base team, what you're doing is you're moving your linebacker, one of your linebackers, down to a defensive lineman. So you're replacing him with a linebacker and replacing that linebacker with the defensive back. Now, there are some situational uses for the 4-2-5. You can use it as your base defense, but you have to have the personnel in order to pull that off. But some situational uses are good against teams that love to throw to the flats. This is a great defense for that. Teams that love to utilize three and four wide receiver sets. And also teams that throw out of uh, balance of formations, which means, right, you see right here, we have two receivers on both sides. This is a great defense for that. It's a balanced passing formation. So the 4-2-5 is excellent. Now let's take a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses of this defense. Some of the strengths of the 4-2-5 is the fact that you can get a four-man pass rush. You can also zone blitz effectively out this formation. You can send three to four guys coming from one side on blitz pressures. You can also drop back in the zone with five defensive backs. And you have some strong run support versus the outside run. And you can also match up speed for speed. And one more thing that's a strength about this defense is the fact that you can double one or two wide receivers in man coverage. Now, some of the weaknesses are, it's only a few. Some of the weaknesses I see out this defense is that, one, if a team runs three-layered flood routes, they'll kill you. So you really need that pass rush to get there. So those three-layered flood routes could do damage. And for an offense, it's easier to block a six-man front as opposed to a seven-man front. So if a team decides to check out of a pass play and check to the inside run play, it could be a problem for this defense. Now let's take a look at some gap responsibilities for the guys in that front seven. The gap responsibilities for the guys up front on this defensive line in the 4-2-5 are like this. You look at the defensive ends, they're going to be asked to play a squeeze technique where it's essentially a five technique. They're going to play down the middle, try to maintain outside leverage as far as the outside runs go getting after the quarterback. It's almost like a contained rush, but they're going to have to squeeze down, try to get these guards, get these tackles to go inside. You want to squeeze this gap right here, this B gap, squeeze that B gap so that way the linebackers have an easier read because they're aligned in the B gap. You want to squeeze this down, but maintain outside leverage. That's the duties of both defensive ends. Now you look at the guard, the, the guards and the defensive tackles. The D tackles will line up in a solid call, which is head up on the guards. And they're going to play two gaps. They're going to try to play this A gap as well as this B gap. You got to push through the guards to maintain your gap discipline. That's their job. I know they could be shaded to different sides. They had different calls. They may be tilted to one side or shaded to one side. You can line up different ways, but for your basic 425 front, these guys will be aligned head up over the guards. Now the linebackers will use what we call a hat read, which means they're going to read the hats, the helmets of the guards. If the guards off the ball are going, our heads are going left, then it's the linebackers duty to make sure he plays wherever that guard's head is going after the snap because a lot of times the guards will tell you where the play is going so if his hat tilts right then his backer will be responsible for everything right of the guard so that's your basic alignment setup for the front six in the four two five so to answer your question Sadaris, yes it can be used as your base defense but it does depend on your personnel our next question comes from Coach XO on Twitter at Coach XO. He asked the question, yo, give us a little pistol, Emory, maybe some inside run game, a quarterback lead, or something. I'll do you what? I'll give you all three out of the pistol formation. I give you some inside run and I give you a quarterback lead coming out of that pistol formation. We're gonna show you two plays out of the pistol formation. The first play will be the quarterback trap. 
12 trap, we're gonna call it. One back is the quarterback. Two, we're trapping the two hole. So we're gonna show you what we're talking about right here. Our goal is to trap this defensive tackle. We wanna get him to be over aggressive and fly at the football field. And here's how we're gonna block it. Your base pistol formation, two wide receivers, tight end on the line of scrimmage. Here's how we're gonna block it. We're gonna have the center block down on this defensive tackle right there, get him kicked out, blocked down. Backside tackle is gonna block that defensive end. Play side guard is gonna work up and block this linebacker, get him blocked. And we're gonna have the play side tackle straight up block that inside backer. And we're gonna have the tight end take an inside trek to get the inside shoulder of this defensive end and then go and block the outside backer. Why? Because we're gonna have this guy help out on the outside shoulder of the defensive end. Wide receiver stalk up, try to get him blocked and get that guy blocked. Same with this wide receiver on that side. Now here's where all the action is. We want this guy to fly up the football field like this. Backside guard is pulling around and kicking him out, thus opening up the two hole for the quarterback to make some day, run to daylight. And this is how we're gonna run it, the action. We're gonna have everybody in the backfield show outside veer. So running back is gonna take that step toward the outside veer as he's gonna be the outside dive guy. And we're gonna have the outside, the back take that outside step like he's going around for the pitch. Back is gonna come around and lead the quarterback who's also gonna take that step, wait till he crosses his face, and follow him right in the hole. The back that's coming around for the pitch takes that step and comes back and try to get that outside shoulder of the defensive end. So that's the 12 trap out of the pistol formation. That's how you get your quarterback who has some athletic ability to run the daylight. If everything goes according to plan, like we have it drawn up here, this play should pop for big yardage out that formation. Now let's take a look at the inside lead for the running back out the same pistol formation. And what we're gonna show you now is the 34 lead out of the pistol formation, except we're not gonna lead with the opposite back. We're gonna lead with the backside guard using the opposite back as the misdirection to get everybody in position to be blocked. Here's what we're talking about. We're gonna combo block right here on this defensive tackle. Play side tackle is gonna get off him, work up, and take out the middle backer. Tight end is gonna kick out that defensive end. If that defensive end wants to crash down, he's gonna to try to reach him and push him inside, wash him down inside, but he wants to kick out that defensive end. Center is gonna block down on, right there, that defensive tackle. Backside tackle is gonna work up, try to get that middle backer, and this is why he's gonna get held at the line of scrimmage. Backside, or opposite running back as I use it, he's going this way to give that illusion that it's going outside, holding him at the line of scrimmage. Now we're gonna bring around the backside guard leading up in the hole to knock out that outside linebacker. Wide receiver's trying to go get that strong safety and the quarterback takes a snap and he's gonna reverse pivot, hand off as this running back is gonna ride the backside of that guard into the hole and hopefully run the daylight. So that's the 34 lead out of the pistol formation except we're using the backside guard as the lead guy and not the opposite running back. Our next question comes from Renard Jackson on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Classhole. He asks the question, how about the Tampa 2 defense? Funny you should ask? Let's go inside the lab and break that down as well. The Tampa 2 defense is not an unfamiliar defense to the NFL. We've seen this defense before. If you go back to the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Steel Curtain days and the Chuck Knoll, they ran a similar style of Tampa 2 defense. Now, moving forward, yes, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coined the phrase Tampa 2, but this defense is about as old as dirt. So you look at what is needed for this defense to be successful, specific personnel. And I'm gonna step out the way for a second and show you what attributes each player in that front seven need. Cause we know the back end, the secondary, they're just playing cover two. You need guys that can do a great job at jamming wide receivers. But, but let's look at the front seven. They need specific skill sets to play this Tampa 2 very well. The weak side defensive end has to be the fastest and the best pass rusher out the two defensive ends. Why? Because it's his job to get pressure on a quarterback's blind side, and that's why you want your best pass rusher lined up on that left tackle. Now, the right defensive end has to be the stronger of the two. He's a guy that can anchor down in the running game and also get pressure on the quarterback's front side. So this has to be the stronger out the two defensive ends. Now, there are two money positions 
in the cover two defense or this Tampa two defense, the defense tackle, the three technique, and the Mike linebacker. We'll get to him in a second. But for right now, the three technique has to whip this guard down in, down out. He has to be the most athletic and the quickest off the ball to get to the quarterback from the interior, Warren Sapp. Tommy Harris, two guys that come to mind. You also look at Kevin Williams, another guy that comes to mind. You gotta have a guy that can whip this guard one-on-one -on -one constantly, and that's what this three technique does. Now, the one technique, and every, this whole defense is a one-gap defense. Uh, let me get that out there right now. It's a one-gap defense. So the one technique is more of a nose tackle, so to speak. He will be the stronger out of the two D tackles. His job is to be that penetrator, occupy blockers to create one-on-one -on -one opportunities for these guys, and this guy over here. Now the backer is your weak side backer, classic run and chase type linebacker, strong side backer will be the more coverage guy on this tight end, but also has sound running ability as far as run stuffing ability, but all three guys should be able to run. Now the Mike linebacker in the Tampa two is vital because he's gonna have to do something unique. He's gonna have to drop down all the way down the field, down the middle of the field, almost giving that cover three look. So they can go from a cover two to a cover three with the Mike linebacker dropping down the middle of the field, covering the deep third. So he has to be the most athletic out of the three and play in the middle. So that's why you see a guy like Brian Erlacher or some other guys have mastered this position, but Brian Erlacher instantly jumps to mind out this defense. You want him to be athletic enough to make plays in a running game and also drop back in that deep third in this Tampa 2 defense. So that is it in a nutshell. And so like I said before, the Tampa 2 defense we've seen before is nothing new, it's nothing fancy. This is something that has been around for ages, but it's an effective defense if you have the right personnel. And our final Twitter suggestion comes from Kevin at Mr. Quick Slant. He asked the question, have you done anything on the translation of Chip Kelly's offense to the NFL? We haven't done anything yet, but since this is inside the lab, we're gonna do that right now. So let's go break down Chip Kelly's offense and what, how it translates to the National Football League. We know Chip Kelly's offense at Oregon was predicated on tempo and speed, but also it's predicated on misdirection and getting his playmakers in position to make plays. And he definitely has a, a wealth of playmakers and speed at the Philadelphia Eagles. And we're gonna show you how he's gonna utilize his offense and how it does translate to the National Football League level. Here we have Shady McCoy in the backfield, Michael Vick, Deshaun Jackson. We're gonna get Deshaun Jackson the football on an inside counter play, a misdirection play. And we're gonna get it blocked up perfectly to where Jackson can utilize his speed on the inside and hopefully spring free for a big play. This is how we're gonna have it blocked up. We're gonna have the backside tackle block the backside defensive end. We're gonna have the center and guard combo. Now here's where they're gonna to have to do their their due diligence. They're gonna to have to make sure they keep an eye on this Mike Backer. If he comes this way, then the tackle, the play, I'm sorry, the backside guard will get up, climb up, and make that block on the Mike linebacker. But if he shoots this way, then the center will climb up and make that block. So both of these guys are comboing this defensive tackle, but keeping their eyes on which direction the Mike linebacker goes. Because if he goes to either side, that's now their man, because they're comboing to climb to the second level. Now we have this action right here. Combo this defensive tackle, play side guard is gonna work up and get the strong side backer. And we're gonna have the tight end go up and get that strong safety. Why? Because what we're doing, we're bringing a flash motion around with Shady McCoy. And why that works? Because it's gonna pull people into getting blocked. So now we can bring Deshaun Jackson on a short motion and shoot him inside right there as Vic will run and hand it off. So you see how speed can dictate where the defense is going and how to get playmakers to football by getting everything blocked up just like normal. It's no gimmick, it's just a normal play that where you're trying to get misdirection going to get guys flowing the way you want them to go to get them in position to be better blocked and that's how he can have his offense translate to the next level. Let's show you another running play right quick. Let me erase this and show you guys another way Chip Kelly can have some success. Since Chip Kelly's offense is predicated on speed, we're gonna show you how when they get to the line of scrimmage quickly, utilizing the same formation, they can run a different play, now getting Deshaun Jackson on the perimeter as far as an end of round. And we're gonna look at how we're gonna block it up right here, backside tackle is gonna block that backside defensive end. Now we have the combo block, same combo block on the defensive tackle. Now, the center is gonna go and block the weak side linebacker. Same combo block here, I'm sorry, 
Now the back, the play side tackle is going to walk up and get that middle linebacker. We're going to have the tight end stalk outside and go block the outside backer. Why? Because we're going to have the wide receiver work up and try to go block that strong safety. We're leaving him unblocked as he's going to be reading the dive and taking Michael Vick. So he's going to come down, probably crash down this way. We put Deshaun Jackson on a short motion. And as Vick fakes his handoff, spins around, hands it off to Jackson, he gets to the outside. So we showed you an inside run with Deshaun Jackson. We showed you an end around. Now we're going to show you how that up-tempo offense can now put you in better position for a passing play off the same type of play action. What I've also noticed about Chip Kelly's offense is that he utilizes the same run action to set up that play action pass, which puts that defense at a disadvantage. We're going to show you right here how deadly it can be. So let's utilize the same run action. So Vic is going to ride right here, LaShawn McCoy. He's going to work into the offensive line and then go out to the flat. We're going to have Deshaun Jackson come back around and either be the hot read on a swing route because we have the tight end stalking up, attacking the seam. We're going to have the wide receiver take and out, give an outside fake and go inside putting the strong safety at a disadvantage and also putting pressure on the free safety because we have now a backside dig route. So as Vic showing that that run action, you're gonna hold these linebackers. He could pull it quick, hit this guy because this is a window right here. He can also wait and hit this guy one on one. Vic has a strong enough arm to get there. Or if he sees the safety fly over here, as he's pulling this around, he can hit the backside post. Or if he sees the strong safety come. And on a blitz, you already have the built-in hot read with Deshaun Jackson swinging around. So the offense does translate, to answer your question, it does translate. It puts a lot of pressure on opposing defenses, and the Eagles definitely have a lot of playmakers to make this offense click at the National Football League level. So that's it. We've taken your suggestions, we've answered your questions, and hopefully that helps you guys out moving forward. Now, if you have any other suggestions or things you would like to get answered here on our Inside the Lab Hunts Playbook segment, suggestion time, hit us up on Twitter at FBallGamePlan with the hashtag suggestionXO.